my candle. Okay, hi everyone. I'm trying something a little different. I can't see the screen this evening, so like I presume it's gonna work. Um, I just think it's better quality for you guys when I use the back camera as opposed to the front camera, camera it's a little less grainy. Um, the only downside is if anything happens and I get disconnected then I just continue here by myself doing a prenatal class on my own <laughs> with no baby. <laughs> but welcome. Grab any bits that you need in case you don't have them already. Uh, for me, it's pillows. Uh, going to light some candles, so feel free to do that too. Uh, I tried the yin yesterday with some music and I think it's better if I don't play music and if you do have a Bluetooth speaker or some other type of way people listen to music these days, don't know how. Um, of course, start to play your own music. I have some Spotify playlists that are really nice for prenatal that I linked last week, so you might still have those. If not, I'll link them again. Just any kind of relaxing music. So we'll start in a comfortable seat whatever kind of seat that means for you might be pillow under the bum might be soles of the feet together knees apart you might cross the ankles another nice way to sit is making although this pillow is going to work for me if you had a kind of a bed pillow to straddle the pillow so whatever feels comfortable for you, coming down into a seat. Taking one hand to baby, one hand to heart. And even if you're not pregnant, one hand on the belly. And taking a few deep breaths here, starting to connect body, mind, breath, and baby for those who have baby inside. Filling up and then letting go. make our way into a wide knee child's pose. So move the props out of the way if they are in the way. You can take them with you if needed, having maybe pillow or bolster out in front. You can also pop a pillow or bolster underneath the hips if that's a little bit more comfortable and walk the hands out in front and depending how far along you are will depend on how wide the knees need to be. So bump will nestle in between the legs. And then let the forehead, the third eye space, connect to Mama Earth or your prop. And then take a few deep breaths in, breathing into the back body. And while we settle here on the mat, allowing the breath to settle, the mind, the body, we'll just go through some housekeeping with you guys. And especially since I can't see you, I really need you guys to tune into your own intuition and 
follow what feels right for your body. If at any point in practice you need a child's pose, come into a child's pose. And I'll give options depending on whether you've got lots of energy this evening or whether you're feeling a little more slow. And then if anyone is suffering from reflux, avoid having the head lower than the heart. So down dog would be a, a, a pose that you might want to avoid. You can take a cat cow instead, or you can take down dog at the wall. So having the feet hip distance, hands on the wall, and then letting the heart sink between the biceps. Same stretch, but we're just standing up Tall, not in an inversion. Nice, slow, steady breath, but breathe in a way that works for you, that's comfortable for you. And then if you do work with the bandhas, as you inhale, we'll contract, lift up through the bandhas. And as you exhale, you work to let them go. And if you're not sure what the bandhas are, the energy locks within our body, don't worry about it. I'll also just call them pelvic floor or pelvic wall for Mula Bandha, the bandha in our pelvic floor. And then the lower abs. We won't really be working with that today, especially with the bump taking up space here. So let's take a deep breath in together. Exhale through the mouth. You can make a sound. And if at any point in practice you feel you're building up lots of heat and tension in the body, just sigh or exhale through the mouth. When you're ready, bring yourself forward up into a tabletop and have the hands and knees as wide as you need them to be to feel supported. It might be a little bit wider than shoulder and hip distance. And then on the inhale breath, the heart will lift through the gateways of the shoulders and the chin lifts and a little dip of the belly, nothing too exaggerated here. But as you exhale, feel the hands ground into the mat as you begin to dome the body, hugging bump up into your body. And then on the inhale, heart radiates forward, chin lifts, shoulders roll back. And as you exhale, dome. Take three more like this, focusing on the inhale as you inhale and the exhale as you exhale. Fill up. And let. back into a neutral pose, keeping the back and upper body stable, start to take very little rolls through the hips. So starting to tuck the tailbone and then hips over to the right, tailbone lifts over to the left. Working to stay strong and stable in the upper back and the shoulders, the head and the neck. And then turning the other way or repeating those mini hip rolls in the opposite direction. As if there were a pencil on the tailbone and you're drawing circles, 
small circles on the wall behind. Coming back into a neutral spine, taking the hip rolls bigger this time, start to sweep the sit bones back towards the right heel, over towards the left, left hand side, and then back to center. And then a few more times like this and move as slowly as you need to move, maybe lingering in any parts of the hips that feel stuck or sticky. And if it feels right for you, you can involve the head and the neck and the arms, but if not, no need. And then coming in the other direction. So hips over to the left, back towards the heels, over to the right. And it can be nice to do this with the eyes closed, really taking an opportunity to tune inward. back to a neutral spine. Keep the left hand as is and then we'll inhale, reach the right hand to the sky and as you exhale, thread the needle so the right arm comes underneath the left and then the right shoulder and the right ear come to the floor. From here, you can stay where you are, or you can send the left hand towards the top of the mat. So the right shoulder and ear are connected to the floor, hips are high, and you have the option to stay here or send that left foot out to the left so the legs straightens, getting a nice open twist. The leg is extended, bring the knee back to the floor. And if the arm is extended, bring the hand back to the mat and then press into the left hand. Inhale, right arm reaches up to the sky and then exhale, right hand to the floor. Left hand lifts up this time, inhale. And as you exhale, thread the needle, left shoulder and ear to the floor. If you're looking at the screen, don't mind me. I'm just turning around so that my voice projects still to the microphone. And then again, you have the option with that right hand to either leave it as it is or send the arm out in front. And you can stay as you are or send that right foot out towards the right, lifting the knee off the floor, extending the leg. If the legs extended, knee comes back to the earth. If the arm is extended, hand comes back to the floor. And then inhale, lift the left hand high. Exhale, both hands back to the earth. Keeping the hips over the knees, puppy dog pose, walk the hands out in front forehead towards the floor, but rather than allowing the chest sink towards the mat, can we hollow out the armpit? So keep a little bit of strength through the upper body, maybe even forehead stays lifted. If this is too much, do rest forehead on the floor. But keep pressing the hands into the earth, strong through the arms. 
almost like a damn dog, but with the knees on the mat. And if this isn't working for you today because you're experiencing some reflux, the gentle cat cow, as we were doing before, will also work here to create some space through the spine. If you're in puppy dog pose, plant the hands, walk them back, tuck the toes and find your downward facing dog, feet probably a little bit wider than hip distance. I want you to create a bit of space for a bump as you press the floor away from you. Knees can stay bent, especially in the first down dog off the practice. And begin to pedal out the feet. So though it's a down dog shape, our hips are high, we're in this upside down V. We're being quite fluid with the movement here. So you can rock the hips from side to side. You can give the head a gentle nod or shake. And again, this is just an opportunity to feel in, maybe acknowledging those parts of the body that are feeling tight or tense. And also honoring the parts of the body that are feeling open or spacious. And then we'll walk the hands back towards the feet for a forward fold rag doll. Let the head become heavy. Give the head a little nod or a shake. Going upside down isn't comfortable. Halfway lift here, hands to the shins or the knees, lift the head higher than the heart. Otherwise, we're allowing the spine to pour out from the pelvis, maybe even swaying from side to side. And then we'll all meet with hands on knees. And start to peel the heart up, almost like a little back bend. Can we kiss the shoulder blades together behind us? Exhale to fold, keep the hands on the knees. And then inhale, press the feet into the floor, strong through the legs, reach the hands overhead, gaze up to the thumbs. And then exhale, hands to heart, center. I practiced with my hair down earlier. It was fine because I hadn't washed it and now it's just a bit all over the place. I'm gonna grab a hair tie. We'll flow through some prenatal sun salutations, but these are also super lovely even if you aren't pregnant. We start at the back of the mat for these and they incorporate all of our movements different asana but same target area as original sun salutations. So feet will be wider, ground down through all 10 toes, draw energy up from the earth, activating the legs. On the inhale breath, reach the hands overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. And as you exhale, bend the knees, forward fold, hands to the knees, and then our halfway lift, which is to extend the spine. So inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. As we exhale, it's a downward facing dog. Walk the hands out, come into downward dog. We'll do this first one nice and slowly so we get the concept. On the inhale, let's bring the knees to the floor for cow pose. A little lift off the chest. Option here, let's all exhale, take a angry cat. And then inhale back to neutral. So that's one option. The other option is exhale, modify chaturanga, lower the heart towards the thumbs. 
and then inhale, press back up to neutral. So they're the two options. Because we're no longer coming into cobra or up dog, walk the hands back as you sit onto the heels, hands behind you, and our heart lift comes here as we lift the heart to the sky, kiss the shoulder blades together. If it feels right for you, you might even lift the hips. And then exhale, sit back onto the heels. Hands come forward, tuck the toes, take them nice and wide as we'll push back into a squat. As you inhale, you can keep hands on the floor, hands to heart. And then as you exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Hands to the knees, halfway lift, exhale, fold. And then rise all the way up, hands come overhead, gaze up to the thumbs, hands to heart, center. We'll do a couple more like that, taking the modification of cat cow if chaturanga is too much. Inhale, sweep the hands up, gaze up to the thumbs. As you exhale, hinge from the hips, you can bend through the knees. Hands to the knees, extend the arms, extend the spine, heart lifts. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, knees to the floor, little lift of the heart, neutral spine. Exhale, either angry cat or elbows draw into the body for your half chaturanga. Inhale, table top. Exhale, untuck the toes, walk the hands behind you. And then inhale for our heart opener. Hips might lift. Exhale, sit back down, hands forward. Inhale, yogi squat. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. And then exhale, hands to heart, center. Inhale, sweep the hands up. Moving at your own pace, you can slow down the movement. You can speed it up if you know where you're going. Exhale, bow. Inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, downward facing dog. On the inhale, knees come to the floor, neutral spine. Exhale, either chaturanga or angry cat. Inhale, press back up. Exhale, sit onto the heels. Inhale, heart, maybe hips lift. Exhale, sit back down, hands forward, tuck the toes, inhale, squat pose, malasana, exhale, forward fold, uttanasana, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, and then rise all the way up, hands Come overhead, gaze up to the thumbs. Exhale, hands to heart, center. Close down the eyes, let the shoulders soften and create a little bit of length through the back of the neck as you lift the crown of the head towards the sky. Deep breath in together. Long breath out. Coming to tree pose, Brikshasana, ground down through the left leg and if you'd like some extra support, left hand to a wall, if not, 
can go in the center of the room. And then option one is toes to the floor, right toes to the floor, heel towards the shin for the inner calf, the shin. Option two, right foot to the inside of the left leg. Option three, right foot to the inside of the thigh. Firm up that left leg and then press the right leg into the left as much as you're pressing the left into the right foot. You can take one hand towards prayer if you're feeling balanced, both hands to prayer. And then again, lift up through the crown of the head. Drishti your gaze is to a fixed point out in front. And you have the option to take the hands overhead. Notice if the shoulders creep up to the ears, can we keep the shoulders in neutral and take any variation with the arms? And that suits you. Slowly release. The right foot back to the floor. Spread the right toes wide, firm up that right leg. Left toes to the floor, heel either to the inside of the right leg. Foot to the inside of the right leg or foot to the inside of the right thigh. Same as before, draw the foot and the leg towards one another, both legs working. Either one hand to the wall, one to the heart, or two hands in prayer pose in front of the heart space. Keeping the hands as they are, reach them overhead. Release both feet to the earth, hands to heart center. And if you've come away from your mat to find the wall, return back onto your mat, facing the long edge of the mat. Heels in, toes out, hands on the knees, and then sit down nice and low for goddess pose. Notice if the knees and the arches of the feet want to rock in. Can you ground through the baby toe side of the feet, engaging the leg muscles here, especially the glutes, to allow the knees trap over the middle toes. With the hands on the thighs, take a big breath in. And then exhale, allow the right shoulder to dip towards the middle. Elbows can bend. And then inhale, lift up. Exhale, left shoulder dips. Couple more like this. Inhale, lift. Exhale, right. Breath in, lift. Exhale, left. Being mindful of the legs working, let's do one more round. Move with your breath. Inhale, come back towards center. And then as you exhale, straighten the legs, turn the toes in. Inhale, come on up. Kiss the shoulder blades together behind you, heart lifts. And if you need to bend the knees on the way down, do exhale, forward fold. Hands come to the floor underneath the shoulders. Take a halfway lift with the heart. And then as you exhale, fold over the legs. You can stay here with the heart lifted halfway if you prefer not to come into an inversion with the head lower than the heart. Wherever you are, press into the baby toe side of the feet, 
and then firm up the legs by drawing the kneecaps up into their quads and bringing the weight slightly forward towards the fronts of the feet. Take a full breath in. Long breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Halfway lift as you inhale if you're not already there. Exhale, hands to the hips, get strong through the legs and then inhale, press on up. As you exhale, just turn those left toes out towards the left. And inhale, reach the hands to a T. As you exhale, reach the hips back towards the right. Left fingertips reach forward, getting long through that left side waist. And then left hand towards the shin, right hand towards the sky, strong through the leg. You can gaze up to those right thumb or to that right thumb, or you can look down to the left big toe. And then come back to your breath, focusing on those steady, even inhales and exhales. Deep breath in, exhale, gaze to the left big toe, strong legs as you inhale, come on up, exhale, left toes turn out, right toes turn forward, hands to a T, and then allow the left hips reach back, right fingertips forward, right hand down, left hand to the sky. Getting long through the waist and drishti either to the toe or up to the thumb. Somewhere that lets the neck be comfortable but gives you a focus. Take a full breath in. And out, last breath in. Exhale, gaze down to the right big toe. Inhale, come on up. And then exhale, turn both toes forward, hands to heart center. Make our way back towards the back of the mat. Feet a little bit wider than hip distance, I would think. Sweep the hands up, gaze up on the breath in. Exhale, fold forward as before. So flowing through our prenatal vinyasa. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, knees to the floor. Gentle lift of the heart. Exhale. Angry cat or modified chaturanga. Inhale, press back up. This time, exhale, child's pose. And as you find child's pose, it can be nice to rock the third eye or rock the head from side to side, massaging out the third eye space. Taking a few deep breaths into the lumbar spine. Press back up into four point position. And then step the left foot forward and allow the hip soften towards the earth. 
blocks, pillows, whatever it is you have handy can be nice if you feel you can come a little deeper, maybe forearms to the floor, maybe forearms to a pillow. You can also walk the left toes and turn the toes out to give you some more space and it can also be nice to rock or circle the hips rather than staying static. Notice if the head becomes very heavy and the gaze drifts towards the back knee, can we keep the back of the neck long so the head stays lifted in line with the spine? Stay here if this is enough in the hips and you're feeling tighter this evening. You can keep the right hand on the floor. You can come on to the right forearm. Give yourself enough space and then left hand towards the left thigh. Allow the heart to spiral up to the sky. And you can stay here or reach the right left hand back and take hold of the right leg. Now this is quite advanced, so if you're not quite here this evening, obviously don't worry about it. Just stay wherever you're feeling a nice juicy opening, stretch, release, whatever it is you're enjoying. Just stay as you are. If you have the foot in the hand, Release it mindfully back to the floor. Hands come inside that left leg. And then shift the hips back over the right leg, coming into half split variation. Now the leg will be slightly out to the left and the upper body slightly towards the right to make room for bump. But we'll get a good stretch through the back of the left leg, calf, hamstring, as we flex the left toes towards the face. You can have the hands a little bit further than the shoulders or directly under, then inhale, lift the heart. And then exhale, just allow the face, shoulders, everything soften, surrender into the pose. A few more breaths. Slowly re-bend that front knee, plant the hands, and make your way back into tabletop. Right foot steps to the outside of the right hand. Now if you don't quite make it all the way up, use the right hand to help it there. And then either both hands on the floor, you might take forearms to the floor, two blocks. You might stay in a still pose. You might find a bit of movement through the hips. staying on the left hand or coming on to the forearm. Right hand comes to the inside of the right leg as you let the heart spiral up to the sky. And if this is enough for you, of course, stay here. If you'd like to take it deeper, take hold of the back. back leg down, come up 
onto the hands if you're not already there. Table top pose. From table top, make your way into a seat. Get there however you need to get there. We'll start with left leg extended forward, sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Take the left hand towards the left leg, the left foot inside the left leg, wherever works for you. And then inhale the right arm up and over, getting a beautiful lateral side stretch through the right waist. Flex the left toes towards the face. You can press the back of the left leg into the floor. And then Janu Shashasana, modified for prenatal, meaning we won't fold directly over that left leg, we'll fold into the space between the legs to make room for a bump. Come down as deep as feels comfortable for you. It might be nice to close the eyes. And just be mindful that the left leg stays active. Walk the hands back, so the upper body lifts. Now, the right hand comes behind the right hip, so the knee that's bent, the hand comes behind the hip. And you can have it out a little bit further for balance or for support. Press into the right hand, the right shin, and the sole of the left foot as you lift the hips off the floor and reach the left hand up and over. So we'll reopen up through the left waist this time. And then bum comes back onto the floor. Switch the legs, right leg comes forward, left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Right hand comes down, grabbing wherever is comfortable for you. Left arm reaches up and over. slowly making your way into your Janusha Shasana. So hands walk in between the legs. You might come onto forearms, you might not, that's fine. Just allowing the upper body fold. Keep the right toes flexed. walk back. Upper body lifts up, left hand behind you now. So the left knee should be bent and the left hand's behind you. Everyone always gets this wrong in class, so it's hard to, to see what you guys are doing, but it's, yeah, it's just hard to explain. So left shin grounds, right foot grounds, left hand, and then the hips lift up and the right side of the body gets a big stretch. And then sit the bum back onto the floor. Soles of the feet together, knees apart. And allow the upper body round down over the legs. Be mindful that we're not pulling the upper body down so that the shoulders are active and the hands are gripping. We really want to soften into the pose. Give your head a little nod from side to side. Maybe even allow the palms face up as you rest backs of the hands on the floor. We should get a nice opening through the lower back, the back of the pelvis. You might also feel this in the hips or the hamstrings. 
might close down the eyes and take the focus back to the breath. When you're ready, peel the heart up and then come to lie onto the back. As you come to the back, I'm going to finish off with a hip opener either side. So, sole of the right foot on the floor and then the left ankle comes over the right knee. So, figure four, recline pigeon. The left knee is bent and the left ankle is over the right knee, right foot is on the floor. The left hand comes in between the legs and the right hand comes outside the right leg. And start to bring the right knee closer to you, the foot will lift off the floor and then hands come around the right hamstring or the right knee if you want to take it a little bit deeper. You can flex both feet and gently press the left knee out towards the left with that left elbow, just as much as is comfortable for you. The head and the shoulders and the upper body are soft towards the earth. Release both feet to the floor. And when you're ready, right foot comes over left knee. Right hand comes between the legs. Left hand outside the left leg. Hug the left knee in towards the chest. And take hold of the hamstring or outside of the knee. Both feet come to the floor. If you're still comfortable on your back, soles of the feet together, knees apart can be nice. If you're early stages, you'd like to take regular Shavasana. Take regular Shavasana. If you'd like to come into supported reclined butterfly, pillows underneath the upper body, or you can come onto your left side and have a pillow between the knees and one, two, cuddle. And then taking a few moments here, once I sign out, just to concentrate on the breath. Allowing the body to soften. And thank you for joining me. And if you were here last week, last week was a little bit more fiery. Toned it down slightly this week, so let me know if you prefer a bit more energy or this cooler practice, even though there was a bit of heat building at the beginning. And if you have any questions, if you're newer to the practice or newer to practicing with some extra love inside. Feel free to message me with any questions or requests and have a beautiful evening. Namaste yogis, mamas, babies.